Welcome back guys, uh, tonight's video I'm going to show something that took me a wee, wee while to figure out and that's how to stack images that were taken on multiple nights um, over this last few nights I've been shooting away at the Elephant's Trunk Nebula so I haven't got a massive amount of data but I have been, as I go I've been actually stacking these to see just how it gets on so at the minute I'm going to have something reasonable so I'm going to show how it is done um, I would calibrate each night using the batch pre-processing script. I think I've done a video of that before, so most people should know how to do that. Uh, the outcome of that will be you'll have, and I actually generally delete them, so you will end up with, the important thing is that you will have a calibrated folder with lights. I think there is a list of, there's two folders in here, one's cosmeticized and the other one, the one you are after is debayered. So that is the calibrated and debayered images, and they will be in each of the nights. So you process each night individually. It will also align those images, but you don't need to worry about that. You can delete those. Um, so we're going to start with having the uh, lights all calibrated for each session. And I have chosen using uh, the subframe selector on Blink. I've picked out my reference frame for the whole set. So what I will be doing then is using star alignment. And this is these are the settings you use. I don't think there's anything out of the ordinary in here. I think this is all default. So the first thing we do is we pick our reference image, and for me this was in the last night session. So we will go into our calibrated image and pick the one that I've listed as reference. And then what we do is we can just go in and you make sure you're adding the debayered. If this is if you're using a digital SLR. If not, then you probably won't have any debayered files. You'll just be using the maybe the cosmos cosmeticized ones so it doesn't really matter what order you add these in so I'm going to add in them in reverse order so that is the last night then I'll go for the second night and then we will go for the first night and it doesn't matter that that's a reference that was just something I used on the first night so as we can see here then we have 53 images so we pick our output directory so for me just to keep everything nice and clean I think I'm trying to think this is on the fly maybe I should make a folder called RGB and that will be where I put my files these can be quite important because it generates drizzle files and it needs to know where all you can't move things about once you've created this so what we'll do is we will run this process and this will take a wee while because it's trying to align 53 odd images um, so I will pause the video and I'll come back once it's finished and I'll take you on through then uh, the image integration stage okay so the task then has it's actually finished it didn't take as long as I thought it's only two minutes two and a half minutes so we can close this and then we'll go to integration, so image integration. So these are different settings that you'll use for different numbers of sub exposures. Um, these are there's lots of information about this online. I got most of this information from Inside Pixin site, the book. It's very, very useful. So as I have 52 images, that puts me in the 25 or more. So I go to add files and then we'll go back to this RGB. I'll just show you this so that you can see it. So you can see there's actually two different types of files in here. So this is part of the setup that I had in Star Alignment. It creates, uh, this is the, if you like, the new aligned file. And then this is a, a drizzle file, I believe. I'm not entirely sure what that is about, I think. It's something to do with uh, a process that was discovered whenever Hubble had its... Uh, mirror malfunction they found a new mathematical way to improve data um, through stacking and further on through stacking using a process called drizzle I haven't really looked into it but you will notice that there's two different types of files and we have to add those both in so the first set that we add are just the standard image files so we press open then you go to add drizzle files if you try to run run this without the drizzle files it will uh, it will prompt you with an error so we add those all in and we can see the D beside each of them. So if we just skip down, you see there's a D beside all of them. So this is the part, so then I'm just going to run this and I'll let it tear away and 
again I'll come back I don't expect this one to take uh, as little as two minutes it's probably going to take a wee bit longer but I will uh, let you know when it's done welcome back so that should be the image is finished I think that took about, about 10 minutes or so so that is our first stacked image from 53 so we can close image integration and let's just do a quick auto stretch let's see what this looks like so on link the channels and do an auto stretch so I mean that's not bad I'm pretty happy with that for less than four hours of data so I'm just going to save that one because I'm going to do something slightly different so you can rename it to something uh, more reasonable later so there's another process then in, that you can use that is use drizzle to create the stacked image so I'm going to do this here and then we can I've never actually compared them before but I will uh, compare the signal to noise ratio you can analyze this there's a module in X inside for doing it so we just add the, the drizzle files you don't need to add the um, actual light files for this and it will pull them in from the drizzle files as they have a a reference to the light file, that's what I was saying about you can't change folder names. So if we start this off, this one takes a wee while, this is probably going to be another 10 minutes I would think. So I'll uh, stop the video and I'll bring it back once it's done. Okay, so that's it uh, finished. So it did take a wee while, let's just see how long it took. Uh, 16 minutes. So it is a wee bit longer than stacking. So I'll just get rid of these. So this is the final image from it. I imagine it will look largely similar it does double up your resolution so you'll see your file size will jump a fair bit if we save that out um, it off. Go 64 bit. okay so we'll actually just close that down and we will open up subframe selector and if we Add the two files I've just created. So we've done before and hit measure. It'll open the two files up. I think this should give me a signal to noise ratio for both. We can actually see does it make any difference to use the drizzle? I've, I've actually never done this before, never thought to do it. load that one in I guess they are let's just see actually what the file size difference is yeah so you're going from a quarter of a gig to almost a gig for a single file so I'm I'm hopeful that there will be a reasonable difference oh wow that is that is staggering so you've actually tripled the signal to noise ratio so oh, I'll be doing that from now on that one's definitely worth it so I'll open up that uh, that file again and just have a wee quick peek at it. So this is less than four hours of data across three nights. Um, conditions haven't been perfect, but I can't complain that much. Using the Canon 40D with the IR filter removed. Uh, I mean, for a completely unedited image, that's it's not bad. I mean, I'll just load up one that I. Did last year. This eventually loads. This is my current website, so I'll be putting a new one up hopefully in the next month or so. So that was one, and that was 24 times 8 minute. So that was about the same overall exposure length, but admittedly, this was on an F6 scope and actually quite an old F6 scope a, a, on a Ryan Europa 200 from the, I think it was from the 1990s. It was my my dad's scope and he uh, gave it to me um, this is with the Quattro F4 so there's actually twice as much data in this uh, but this hasn't been edited in any way so I'm looking forward to hopefully tonight we'll get some HA so I've been just setting up for that um, I'm going to stick with my 240 second exposure as tonight I've been plagued with an intermittent cloud the rest of the week. Tonight it is absolutely crystal clear, but we have at the minute the winds are about 18 miles an hour, and with a, an 800 mil Newtonian 8 inch scope, 
it tends to be affected quite drastically by the wind. So that's supposed to drop off to about 15 as, at sunset and maybe down to 12 through the night, but um, I'll just have to take my chances and see how we go. So I'll uh, hopefully have some HA data to add into this. So thanks for listening.